AM 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, 19 minutes uh, after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. One of the most fascinating stories that's in the news each day these last, maybe for a month now, is the... uh, the Kilauea Volcano in uh, in Hawaii. Dr. Ken Han knows more about this than I will ever know. He's on the phone. It's an honor to have him. He's a volcanologist. He specializes in volcanology, petrology, and mineralogy. He's a professor of geology and volcanology at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, or Hilo, forgive me for mispronouncing that. Uh, he worked for 15 years at the U.S. Geological Survey in the Volcano Hazards Program, and he was appointed interim vice chancellor for academic affairs Affairs at the University of Hawaii at Hilo or Hilo. Uh, Dr. Ken Han, good morning, sir. This is an honor, and it's going to be a fun conversation. Uh, good morning, Larry and Robin. It's great to join you. Um, it is Hilo, um, even though it looks kind of like Hilo, but it's pronounced Hilo. I so pre- that's the town that we live in. I appreciate that. Thank you for sh- sharing that. Is that where you are right now? Um, yes. Yes. So, can I, my first question about the volcano, uh, the, the Kilauea volcano, is was was the eruption of the volcano expected or totally unexpected? Well, I think for most people, you don't really understand that actually the volcano has been erupting pretty much continuously for about thirty five years. So, this is just sort of a change in the phase of that activity. Ah. The lava moved from one vent and into another vent that happened to open up in a subdivision. And so that's gotten the attraction, obviously, of the national news. Um, And also the amount of lava, since it's moved down on the lower slopes of the volcano, it's actually draining some of the surplus lava in the system out. And so we have a lot more lava coming out on the surface than we have had during the past 35 years. What effect does it have locally in Hawaii, especially the Big Island, and and does it have any effect at all globally? Well, uh, locally, uh, obviously, it has a huge impact on people that live in the area immediately surrounding where the vents have opened up, and it's you know it's it's very tragic, really, that it you know it's taken out about five or six hundred houses mm-hmm. at this point. So that's had a big impact on people, and it's also closed a lot of roads. So a lot of other people have had to evacuate because they can no longer access their their houses. So. You know, we're all concerned about those people, but as far as the rest of the island, there's really very little impact on it. Um, our island is, you know, we, I live 20 miles away, and if you didn't read about it and know that it was happening, you know, you'd be hard-pressed oh, to know really? that there was eruption going on from 20 miles away. Can the uh, tremors from this volcano cause the other active volcanoes to erupt? Um, I didn't quite get the question. Oh, when since this volcano is erupting and there are other volcanoes on the island, could it cause a chain reaction and have the other volcanoes erupt as well? Oh, uh, no. Um, mostly the other the volcanoes don't erupt at the same time, and really it's only Mauna Loa, its nearest neighbor, that erupts um, with any frequency. And we've only had one historic eruption when they were both erupting simultaneously. That was in 1984. But in the couple hundred years of history we have before that, it's usually kind of one or the other is erupting. So it doesn't mean that Mauna Loa can't erupt, but it's certainly not going to trigger the eruption. They have separate magma chambers and separate plumbing systems, so they're not really interconnected at that level. Is the uh, this is probably a dumb question because I think I know the answer, but do does does the volcano generate tourism? Maybe unwanted tourism in this case. Well, I mean, clearly the the volcanoes generate tourism. We have Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on our island, which was set up specifically so people could actually witness these kind of amazing events. And most of the eruptions, for the most part are contained within the national park. It's up near the summit and on the upper parts of the volcanoes where most of the lava comes out. Um, And I think what you're alluding to are are we having problems with people going into areas that they shouldn't be in. And there's a certain amount of that, but uh, the the county has done a good job and the state has has done a good job of of blocking those roads and only allowing access to residents. Um, So don't have a lot of people wandering around back in those areas where they shouldn't be. 
Does the volcano, um, in, in what's happening right now, does it give you an unprecedented opportunity to study volcanoes? Yeah, I mean, this is really a, it's a pretty amazing uh, eruption scientifically. We've actually produced the kind of lava that's never come out on the surface of Kilauea volcano before, so we're having a couple of firsts like that. And the fact that this opened up on the lower flanks and is draining lava away from the summit area, the summit area is kind of collapsing down or subsiding um, as that lava is withdrawn from it. So it's giving us the first time with a lot of modern instrumentation to look at the volume and shape changes in the volcano. So scientifically, you know, we're all very busy actually kind of keeping track of where everything's going and make sure everybody's safe. But we're also collecting a huge amount of data that after this eruption is over, that we'll be able to analyze and get a better idea of exactly how magma moves within the volcano and how it responds to these different kinds of events. Well, after the eruption is over, then will uh, plants and trees be able to grow? Will, will they come up through that lava? Uh, yeah, eventually plants and trees will take over again. And actually, uh, a lot of this eruption is in the site of the 1955 eruption. So those are only like a yeah, half a century old. And they were covered with enough trees that a lot of people who live next to them didn't even realize that those were historic eruptions. Oh, my. So, yeah, so eventually this will become plant and tree covered, but there'll be a time period here where that you're looking at this uh, pretty amazingly different landscape than the one that, that people moved into when they bought their homes there. So I asked if it was causing um, tourism. Is it, is it affecting tourism in a negative way? Are people staying away because of the volcano? Well, I think the way the publicity has been presented on a lot of the na national TV and such is that you would think that our entire island was being inundated by lava flows right, right now. Right, yeah. And in, in reality, uh, I can assure you that 99% of the island is lava flow free at the moment. So it's a very small area where this is taking place. And that's not to downplay the impact that this is having on the people that live in that region. Right. But the rest of the island is... <laughs> you know, open, and like I said, you, you would be hard-pressed to know that there was, a, if you were over on the corner or the west side of the island, right, you would really be hard-pressed to know that there was a volcanic eruption going on on the island. Will the people come back to their destroyed homes and rebuild, or will they go somewhere else? Um, would what come back? The people that, that have been forced to leave. Will they be able to come back and rebuild their homes once this is done, or will be, they be rebuilding somewhere else? Um, probably a lot of the people will relocate someplace else um, in terms of building their houses. You know, the, the, the area that a lot of these houses were in is what we call Volcano Zone 1, which is an area where active vents can happen. And so these are the areas that we worry about the most because the lava can actually erupt in there without a lot of warning. We had a couple of days of warning to let people know that something was going to happen. But basically, instead of waiting for the lava flow to come down the hill to you, too, where you'd have a lot of extra time, you know, this is the lava is just opening up, and we actually have vents, you know, where people's homes used to be. Wow. Oh so, yeah, so it is a situation where, you know, it's up to those people still own the property, so, you know, it, it's still, you know, kind of personal decisions at, at this point on what people do afterwards. It, it, it's a fascinating news story to, to watch this, especially when there were videos posted. Um, the uh, is there a camera? You know, I have a, a weird question, probably a dumb one, I guess, on, in the dumb category. Does it make any sound? Is it, is it audible? Can you hear it? <laughs> um, it makes sound, um, and this. This strange uh, lava flow type that came out that we call andesite that came out early in the eruption, it actually is very much stickier, and so it was making booming sounds that could be heard for several miles around it. Um, but that has been quit. That was in the first two weeks or so of the eruption. And mm. so right now it makes kind of a whooshing noise if you're up close to it, but you have to be within a you know half mile or so really to hear the volcano. Wow. It's not something that you hear from a very long distance away from it. Let, let me, uh, we have like 30 seconds. The website I have is the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau website, hvcb.org. I'm guessing that's used for the people who want to make sure that it's still safe to get there, right? 
Well, there's an easier one just called gulfhawaii.com that has information about the eruption. Oh, okay. And okay. so what I just like to reassure people on the way out here is that it's perfectly safe to come visit our island. You can still get here. You can do most of the activities, including things like boat trips and helicopter trips where you can view this historic eruption. Oh, how cool so is that? So it's actually an amazing time to visit the island. Wow, wow. Uh, well, something you've been studying all your life. We're all studying. We're, we're like micro experts all of a sudden. Uh, Dr. Ken Hahn, thank you for being on there with us today. That was fun. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Friends, countrymen, tourists, and O'Callens, lend me your ears. Hey, speaking of ears, there is an opportunity for you to help feed and provide good maintenance, housing, and medical care for Marion County's rescued big cats, bears, monkeys, and other disabled or unreleasable wild and exotic animals. Take a tour on Wednesdays or Saturdays of the Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary. Call 352-266-2859. The Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary is affectionately known as ears. If you're looking for some summertime color for your yard, then your first stop should be Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens in Ocala. How about a half-price sale on Oleander? Yes, Oleander. A huge selection of colors, regularly $24.99, just $12.99. Also with great savings, these favorites including Alamanda, Black-Eyed Susan, Gardenia, Sun Patience, Agapanthus too. And inside their old-timey greenhouse, hundreds of money-saving decorating ideas, including a new selection of birdbath fountains and pottery, garden flags, wind chimes, and much, much more, all at 10% off. Don't forget 20% off the red tag sale on hundreds of trees this week at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens, Southeast 38th Street, Ocala, just east of Lake Weir Avenue. Daily till 4.30, Saturdays till 3, the same blooming location since 1952. You're thinking about selling your home, but where do you start? Easy. Call Angie at 352-361-8359. Angie works with you to get your home sold. Angie is more than just an agent with Roberts Real Estate. She's a pro with heart. Call her at 352-361-8359, and you will know you have the right person. I'm Angie Umpleby, and I'm looking forward to working with you. When you call me at 352-361-8359, that's 352-361-8359. If you or a loved one is suffering with knee, shoulder, neck, back pain, or tennis elbow, and would like to learn how to get out of pain, go to Regenetic.com. Then listen in on the first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. to the people that give you the regenerative medical solutions to your pain. Regenetic, first and third Thursdays, 10 a.m. here on WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m. The Source, Regenetic.com. Here are today's headlines from the source, WOCA. Drowning is the leading cause of death for children under the age of four, and unfortunately, it's becoming more common in America. Morag McKay from Safe Kids Worldwide says from 2015 to 2016, fatal drowning incidents increased by 14%. Eight in 10 of the open water fatal drowning victims were male. So that, for me, was surprising. We knew that males typically had higher injury rates than Females, but to see eight and ten, that was surprising. A study by the nonprofit Safe Kids found that over 1,000 children die a year from drowning, and 70% of those cases happen from May through August. As the summer heats up, children spend more time by open bodies of water, and nearly 7,000 children are rushed to the ER every year. The study found boys between the ages of eight and ten, African American children, and Native American children are at the greatest risk for drowning. Authorities are warning Florida residents about a lottery scam. Hillsboro Sheriff Chad Cronister says dozens of people have been targeted in Hillsboro, Polk, and Lake Counties. They would target uh, Hispanic, elderly Hispanic females, approach them, let them know that they had entered the country illegally and needed assistance because they won the lottery and weren't able to cash the ticket. 
Chronister says three men are wandering parking lots looking for their next victim. So far, they have scammed people out of over $150,000 in cash and $34,000 in jewelry. The Attorney General's office says anyone who's been scammed can feel free to contact their office without fear of deportation. It's called Canine Partners for Patriots. The Brooksville-based nonprofit organization trains shelter and rescue dogs to help veterans with PTSD and traumatic brain disorders. Ron Flaville is a trainer with the group and a veteran and says these dogs can help veterans cope with depression and anxiety. When you start suffering from anxiety attacks and uh, nightmares, flashbacks, things of that nature, your body starts producing adrenaline. All dogs can smell it. Dogs react differently to it. The dogs that are scenting that adrenaline and wanting to do something, that's where we focus into that training. Like The veterans who are part of this program train with their dog for five months. Canine Partners for Patriots is looking for sponsors, donations, and volunteers who can provide foster care for some of the dogs. Ocala police officers have taken a man into custody who barricaded himself at an Ocala apartment complex Saturday. Ocala's SWAT team was called out to Sutton Place in the 500 block of Northeast 23rd Circle. According to the Ocala police Facebook post, the standoff stemmed from a well-being check on a previous domestic violence victim. Authorities say they were able to safely remove a mother and four children from the apartment. The suspect has a felony warrant for aggravated domestic battery. There is also an injunction against him. Three victims of the roller coaster derailment last Thursday in Daytona Beach are considering a lawsuit. Attorney Matt Morgan is expected to hold a news conference today regarding a possible lawsuit. Morgan says he is representing three victims with one of them seriously injured. Nine people were taken to the hospital Thursday when the sand blaster roller coaster at Daytona Beach Boardwalk derailed. Two people fell 34 feet to the ground. The ride had failed inspection in May, but state inspectors said the problems had been corrected. The ride passed inspection just hours before the derailment. The Florida Department of Agriculture, which inspects amusement park rides, said it was launching an investigation to determine what caused the accident. The ride was inspected again after the accident. The inspection reports says the ride failed due to structural integrity. Deputies responded to a call concerning a missing three-year-old left in a possibly stolen vehicle at the Vista Haven Apartments located in the 200 block of Petunia Terrace in Seminole County. Deputies there located the vehicle upon arrival to the apartment and the windows were rolled up with a three-year-old child inside. According to the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, the child was discovered inside the vehicle going in and out of consciousness and overheated. The child was immediately rushed to the hospital where she remains in critical but stable condition. Investigators discovered that Casey Kelly, the mother of the three-year-old, was traveling late Saturday night to a liquor store with three children when she returned to her home at approximately 11.15 p.m. She took her two older children into the apartment but abandoned the three-year-old. Keller realized the child was missing from the apartment Sunday morning and called police to report the child missing. Investigators claim Keller left the child inside the vehicle overnight. Keller was arrested and booked into the John E. Polk Correctional Facility on $15,000 bond. No evidence was found by investigators that the vehicle was stolen or tampered with. Detectives in Ocala are investigating a false imprisonment and aggravated battery that happened at a Holiday Inn location. Three people have been arrested. The incident happened just after 6 p.m. Friday in the 3600 block of Southwest 38th Avenue. Police received reports of a woman yelling from a balcony at the hotel, stating she was being held against her will and begging for help. Hotel guests called 911, and when officers arrived, they located a 25-year-old female victim. Police say she had been severely beaten, sustained head trauma, and was transported to a local hospital for treatment. Officers and hotel staff identified five people who were questioned and three now face charges. Devin Brooke McDougall Stiegel, 27 of Largo, and Stacy Gonzalez, who is 37 of Tampa, were charged with aggravated battery and false imprisonment. 65-year-old Morris Beebe of London, Kentucky, was charged with principal to false imprisonment. The victim is known to the suspects and she was able to positively identify identify each of them in a photo lineup according to a statement issued by the Ocala Police Department. 
Troopers have released the names of those involved in a crash on Florida's turnpike that left a seven-year-old boy dead and several other children in serious condition. The crash happened at about 1.39 a.m. Saturday near Leesburg in Lake County. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, a man was driving a semi northbound on the turnpike in the right lane along with a 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan when the semi struck the back of the Dodge. The Grand Caravan then struck the guardrail on the roadway and the semi overturned on the outside shoulder. Adrian Perez, who was seven years old, died at Leesburg Regional Medical Center. A four-year-old boy, a six-year-old girl, and a nine-year-old girl were taken to Arnold Palmer Hospital for children. They were listed in serious condition. The driver of the Grand Caravan, Natalia Ramirez Martin, 31 years old, was seriously injured and a passenger, 30 32-year-old Salvador Hernandez had minor injuries. They were both transported to Orlando Regional Medical Center. Everyone in the Grand Caravan were from Fort Pierce. The driver of the semi, 51-year-old William Irvin Anderson Jr. of West Park in Broward County, was not hurt. A 14-year-old Marion County girl last seen Saturday has been found safe. Iana Dawson was last seen Saturday in the 3600 block of West Highway 40 in Ocala. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement says Marion County Sheriff's Office says Dawson was found safe yesterday. No other information was provided. Florida Polytechnic University in Lakeland is trying to get CEOs and executives with I-4 corridor businesses to spend a week on campus. Gordon Bird reports. Florida Poly President Randy Avent says they're signing up a limited number of business executives for a five-day resident program in early August developed by two professors at Harvard Business School. The program is really going to hit a lot of the management terms, but it's going to have a little bit of a technology bent on it. Florida Poly professors will run most of the classes, and at night there's networking. The program is limited to about 40 people. Sign up is going on until July 22nd or until classes fill up at the university's website. I'm Gordon Bird. And those are the headlines from the source WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for Monday. Clouds and sunshine with a spotty afternoon thunderstorm. Highs 86 to 91 degrees. Mainly clear Monday night, low 71 to 73. And dry day on Tuesday with sunshine and some clouds. Highs 87 to 93. Mostly sunny for the middle of the week on Wednesday. With highs 90 to 93 for Wednesday afternoon. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Courtney Spamer. Did you get your tickets yet to see the paranormal Sir Acrobats of the Air? Illusionist freaks, mysterious creatures of all elements that make one think of a normal circus. But that of normal has very little. Get ready, Ocala. Paranormal Cirque is here now for the shows June 21st to the 24th. A crazy yet fun fusion between circus, theater, and cabaret in perfect harmony with the evolution of a dark show that brings you back to where we dream and where we had nightmares and fantasies. This is truly a paranormal experience like no other. So mark your calendars now, June 21st to the 24th, under the black and red Big Top, located at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion. Tickets start at just $20. You can get $2 off every ticket in any level with promo code WICKED. Visit ParanormalCirc.com now. Keep up with what's going on in the downtown area with Ocala Downtown Newspaper. Delivering thousands of newspapers to businesses in the downtown area, Ocala Downtown is there to keep you informed. They even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the Downtown Ocala Newspaper today. And now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your Verizon representative with news that will hum your car, make it smart and safe. How? With a new hum device by Verizon. You can rest assured you're never alone. Flat tire? Lost? Accident? For $10 a month, hum by Verizon has you covered. And I will come to you in Marion County to install the hum for free. Time to call me at 352-528-0020. Are you ready to hum along? Call 352-528-0020. The right way to harvest and store summer squash from your garden. That's coming up on This Land of Ours. Load it, haul it, dump it, load it. 
Pro will get you equipped for anything with a John Deere 5045E utility tractor. At only $159 per month, you can add the perfect attachment to dig it, plow it, grade it, anything. Request a quote at agproco.com and get equipped for anything. Offer in 731.18. Subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. 20% down payment required. Taxes, freight, setup, and delivery charges could increase monthly payment. See dealer for details. If you're aiming to take out difficult-to-manage pests, choose the insecticide that's always on target, Manecto Pro from Syngenta. Featuring a premix formulation of two powerful modes of action, Manecto Pro extends residual control of pests, including psyllids, mites, whiteflies, thrips, beetles, and worms. It's also designed to protect specialty crops, including citrus, tree nuts, palm, potatoes, and vegetables. So look out, pests. Manecto Pro doesn't miss. Visit your local Syngenta retailer for more information. Always read and follow label instructions. Manecto Pro is a restricted-use pesticide. As you check your plants daily, it's best to harvest summer squash, yellow, or zucchini when small and tender for best flavor. Most varieties average 60 days to maturity and are ready as soon as a week after flowering. It's recommended that you cut the grounds off the vine rather than breaking, twisting, or yanking them off. Use a knife or shears so that the plant is not injured. Fresh summer squash can be stored in the refrigerator for up to 10 days. You could also freeze your squash. Just wash it, cut off the ends or slice and cube it, blanch it in boiling water for three minutes, then immediately immerse in cold water, drain, and allow them to cool and become completely dry. Blanched zucchini or squash can be frozen for up to 14 months, depending on how airtight the seal is. When ready to use, thaw and enjoy within three days, but do not attempt to refreeze it. With just a little preparation, your summer squash can be your go-to for fall and winter cooking. I'm Kathy Isom, Southeast Agnet. All right, uh, 16, 14 minutes before 12 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking day. Hey, before we get started, let me uh, do a real quick thing on the weather here. I am the amateur weatherman. It is right now 87 degrees. Temperatures are expected to get just a little bit warmer. It looks like we might hit the 90 mark. There is a 32% chance we'll see rain most likely the afternoon. Well, that's uh, we're about there right now, aren't we? And that's it. Joe Martone is in the studio, and I'm glad you're here, Joe. That that was um, I I, I really enjoyed the uh, ad you did for uh, the Paranormal Cirque. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, on our midday visit with you, we have wait, where'd you go? I'm still saying you, you're messing with my voice. I'm here. sorry. I, I thought I went <laughs> and it went out the window. And- <laughs> You know it's going to be. It's going to be ninety. Oh, you're welcome, 